everybody. I want to show you how to stretch a canvas if you've not done that before. It is good to be able to have that skill. I know we can buy pre-stretched canvases, but it's great to know how to stretch your own and it gives you more versatility on different type of uh, canvases and products and so forth. Uh, we start with stretcher bars and as you can see, I'm going to hold these close, see the grooves in the ends of those and they are made to fit together like so and you can fit them in by hand. They should fit well. But the reason for that is so that there is some flexibility. You see, paintings are meant to last for hundreds and hundreds of years. And some of the materials and the way that they're constructed helps that to happen. And this gives some flexibility and breathe uh, to the way that uh, uh, the canvas and the wood responds to atmospheric uh, pressure and moisture and so forth. Um, and it's also made so that someday in, in the future, uh, if needed, it could be taken apart and restretched. So uh, this is a time-honored tradition, the way that these are made. So, of course, four sides to a canvas and uh, very important to, uh, this tool is very important, a square. Very, very important to keep everything square. If everything is not square, you will have headaches for always and always. So everything, it is worth everything to slow down, get it square to begin with. This one's a little bit smaller uh, and it's uh, very handy in other places. Measurement, we wanna get very good at measuring. Fractions are our friend. If you're someone who doesn't like math very much, like I didn't in school, I thought it was the most boring thing ever, could hardly stand it. But when I grew up and had a stained glass shop and made architectural stained glass panels, I learned right away how important measurements were and how important it was to understand fractions especially. So if you are one of those people like I was, um, Take heart, there is reason for some of the, the math that you do. And while we're talking about math, I'll also say this. There is a lot in art and painting that has algebraic thinking, meaning that you have multiple sources uh, going into an equation and you have to figure it out. There's uh, visually, there's things like light source, um, color, value, composition. There's a lot to be figured out and actually it's algebraic type of thinking. So take heart if you're taking some algebra and not liking it, um, there is some purpose in it. So end the math commercial. Um, we also are gonna be using a stapler and oh, this is something I really like. It is a stretching tool, especially for canvas and a hammer. This is my dad's hammer used to carve an initial in the back. It's very, very special to me. So anyway, the right tool, scissors, and last but not least, the canvas. Now the canvas, uh, canvases come in a variety of uh, grades and uh, textures, if you will, some more toothy, toothy meaning uh, coarse, and some more smooth. And depending on what you are painting that has application to the type of canvas you choose, artists throughout millennia have really tried to buy the most quality materials they could afford at the time. Um, you hear, hear the term starving artist. Yes, sometimes it's hard to make a living at being an artist and hopefully there's uh, other reasons that you're creating art besides uh, trying to make a living because um, that is often difficult. But uh, this here is Belgian linen. I like to use it for portraits because it's very, very smooth. And as you can see, has a very fine texture. 
I'm going to be taking that and uh, cutting it and getting it ready for the frame and uh, then we'll get going. I'll do the rest of it slow motion. No, nope, I'll do the rest of it fast motion. Bye-bye. thing here is if you have two people it would be a lot easier but 
With patience and persistence, you can do it yourself. Practice, practice, practice. We're ready to go to the next step.